came from behind and just smashed me in the face with a brick. Bust me nose. But it detached all my retina. He got nice, bats, harmonia, and as he fell on the floor, as his body fell out, he just smashed his head on the pavement and he and he died. One got stabbed, uh, one got an axe or a machete over the head. And these fucking these four or five blows come at us, come on in. And I'm just looking and thinking, they didn't even retire for their fucking Bob Bill, they the, the police. Steve Cowens, thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. I'm just trying to understand the mentality of why you would join a football firm. Football's tribal. It doesn't matter whatever you think. Football is tribal, especially in England. So if you're from Sheffield and we've got Leeds, we've got Leeds 30 miles up motorway, you aren't going to just sit there while like 300 of their lads monks around your town centre battering everything in, in the way where the uh, things. So yeah, you have to go and protect. And I've had I've had this with a lot of lot of United fans, Sheffield United fans, who weren't involved in violence, but they've said to me, before you you lot came along, we weren't safe going to football. You came along, and we got a defense we got we got a defense mechanism in place with you lot, because what happened with also in early eight, the casual scene. I know you might not understand this, but a casual scene came along, which were all designer clothes, which it were mad you. You'd be fighting in a four hundred pound Burberry coat and jacket or whatever, <laughs> or with you know, tennis gear, all your feeler and LS and Sergio Tacchini came along, along with golfing stuff where you'd be going in a in a Argyle Pringle sweater to football with fire slacks and look looked a million dollars, you know what I mean? The next me getting ripped all over with fighting. But it, it was a massive cultural um, and social thing that happened and it, it just swept all over the country. Every every team in England and Scotland for that matter, um, had a football firm and a big football firm. So it was sort of survival at fittest. Um, and everywhere you went, bear in mind, you've got to think as well, then there's no mobile phones, you couldn't really organise it. So you just tip up in a town centre, and you didn't know what you are going to face. Um, you, could, you, well, you could go to one town centre with 20 here, and next minute 100 lads just tip up to pub and what have you. And, and that's I used to love that to finish with. You know that out it sounds perverse this you think is hmm. fucking nuts this gun. Um but I used to love it when chips were down. When it were really bad odds and uh, that's when I come to my for that because you can have a football firm of say hundred and fifty lads, but really your football firm's your front twenty lads. Because they're the ones that hold the line, they're the ones that steady the shit. All them could stand and jump around and they're already on the back foot. It's the front 20 that hold it together. And I weren't front 20. I wanted to be front one. I didn't even want front 20. I wanted to be front one. So I was standing front. I, 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 had, I had no fear. That's probably why I got so many, injury, <laughs> so many injuries. What was the worst injury you got? Again, me own, me, my, own, my own fault. Can't moan about it. We, we played Blackburn. Um, we just chased Blackburn's firm, but we'd gone and trained 10 of us. All the rest of them gone and coached us all, rest of our firm, went back to ground to get on the coaches, and we walked to where we just chased them. Obviously, they seen us, 50 of them come running at us, there's only 10 of us. And I've just jumped in the middle of the road telling them, stand, stand. And a few of that, well, they, they, let, they left me, my own team left me, and I, they just got me. And one came from behind and just smashed me in the face with a brick. Bust my nose, but it detached all my retina. And my eye, oh, my eye went out of here. And it, I've still got blurred vision in it now. That's what I said. That was 1987, that. I've got, sla I got slashed on my back at all. Um, various it with bottles and this, that, and other stuff. But it's all been part and parcel. And you can't cry about it because you, you don't have to be there, do you? What was the buzz like for you? You know, if you're going to, let's say, an away game or whether you were going to the city centre to meet an away support a hooligan firm, like what talk me through that sort of side of it. The buzz, the adrenaline rush, the excitement, it all. I've always said the uh, adrenaline rush when it kicks off at football, you can, these adrenaline junkies like they'll drink, jump off buildings or whatever. And I can, I've never done all like that, but I can imagine. Jumping out of a plane, that initial rush, or 
or whatever people do, like dangerous stuff or whatever, it gives them that adrenaline enough. Um, I always said that, that, you, that nothing can compare. There's hundred lads running at you, screaming, uh, throwing bottles and thing, and you've got to hold your line. And you've got to be strong in there. That buzz in that adrenaline takes a different fear, which it certainly did with me. I never carried fear. It was just all a bu- massive buzz. And it's it like a drug, like being a drug addict, because you just wanted more of it, wanted more of it. And especially when we started getting a really good reputation or bad reputation, just <laughs> depending on what side of fence you visit. So. But in our hooligan, um, and echelons of hooligans in, in country, we went from like a quite a nondescript firm to one of probably best firms and uh, most active firms. Uh, we just exploded and, and everybody were talking about us um, so much so that we got we got a lot of respect and, and I, I, I could look down sometimes at United, United's mob and think and there's hundreds of us here and I don't think 2,000 lads would be able to shift us because you just know that people around you trusted them and you knew they weren't going nowhere no matter what. Let's talk about some of your war stories, your hooligan stories. Uh, Birmingham is uh, they they had the Zulus, didn't they? The their firm. Oof, well, you, you had a few fights with them, didn't you? They came to Bramall Lane once, and they, what they did, they left they left the ground early. All their firm. Um, they were a bit of fighting before the game, but they left it and they went to our pub on London Road, which is about five hundred yards from ground and what have you. And they attacked the pub, and to finish with, they used knives. A couple of our lads got slashed, and uh, one got stabbed. But we got up there in jibs and drabs because we all had to run up from ground. Uh, attacking London Road, well. Uh, so we'll run up. Mass, mad, he's fighting. Well, helicopters were above it. Police helicopter filming it all. I'd love to see video of it. Just a proper wall tour to tour. Table and chairs from pub. They got neither. Proper rip like, under the side. Fighting like. We ended up running him. Uh, and to finish, we wanted lads who were slashed. Uh, he was an Asian lad. He got captured. He got tripped over, and he got absolutely splattered all over um, because he got knife and he got he got minced in right. And he was in Sheffield Allenshire Hospital for four days. In fact, they sent him a card saying "Get well soon" from the BBC, which is Blades Business Crew, which is the Sheffield United crew firm. Yeah, they, they sent him a card to hospital as a piss take saying "Get well soon" from BBC, uh, which I thought was quite funny, but. Yeah, and then we played them later on in the season. We took under, about 150, 120, 150 down there. A lot went again down there. And for like two or three seasons, us and Birmingham just had this massive like, rivalry in it. And as quick as it developed, it's gone. It went again. When you guys got promoted to the top league at one point, you, you obviously start playing against some of the bigger clubs. What were some of those firms like? That did... Tottenham, for example, did, did they have much of a firm? How'd you get on with those guys? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in the 80s, Chelsea and West Ham were, were firms in London, especially West Ham. They were they were awesome for uh, Cass's outfit. Um, but later on it got that uh, Tottenham got a really, really good and respected firm. And we, we went down there, we took a right good firm down. They were a trouble before the game, no, nothing major. Then after the game, we all came out ground. We'd all got to go back to Seven Sisters at Tube Station. So we got every, we were waiting to get everybody together. And just as we were waiting to get everybody together outside ground, they all came. And I went, they're here. And a lot of our lads still hadn't come out at ground. Anyway, it kicked off. Oh, fuck. Tore to toe, everybody's fighting like folk. There's about six police in the middle of it trying to keep it. Everybody's just fighting. Everybody's just ignoring them. Just fighting, fighting like mad. And then more and more of our lads are coming out at ground. We end up running them up road, down Seven Sisters. Then it was fighting out of sight, tune. 1992, you're, you're taking on the Chelsea Headhunters, which were the country's top firm, weren't they? Tell me about that. To finish with, this stitch us up. We had 100 lads out that day. We were in uh, World's End at Camden. And I looked around and I thought, fuck it, dude. This, this firm's not going nowhere. I don't know how many chances he's got. And what were happening, they kept coming up to the pub, you know, like, and so they were taunting us and they were trying to get us out of the pub. And I'm saying, 
I was shouting at everybody, don't go out. That's what they want us to do. Stay here. Let them, we're on their we're on their turf. Let them come to us. And then if they came and they got weapons, we could go out at a pub and we've got chairs or whatever. And we could. But well, no, because we were that cocksure of ourselves and they were that up for it. We ended up following. They ended up following down these who were guarding us down this road. I knew it was. I knew it was set up. And I was shouting, rolling. I was right at back for once in my life. I was right at back because I got right on pom. I says, "Very fucking." Next minute. Chelsea came round the corner, told up to folk. They got knives, bats, harmonia in jiff, uh, you know, the little lemon jiff bottles. So they squirt and it goes in your eyes or you cluck. Yeah, and you can't, you blind, you can't see. They got them, they're squirting them on earth. Massive fight kicked off, but we, just, we, we were all Queensbury rules with fists and everybody look, everywhere you look, they got, they got weapons and what have you. And they run, they're the runners. You know, if it's a of so we the runners right right back to the pub because we couldn't fight with with weapons. Later on, we sm- we smashed them all over because we bumped into our children and they obviously they, they ditched the weapons. But since that, I, I'm not going to say it, name it lad, but the lads told me what they did that day. They parked three vans up full of tools because they couldn't carry them around with them because the police got them. So they got these three vans parked up. So when we when we gone down this road, they just all tipped out this pub, went into vans, got everything and just attacked us with it. As soon as they run us and got back, chucked all the stuff back in vans and then they were all thing. Did you ever have any run-ins with Millwall? Oh, yeah, yeah. Loads. I like Millwall. I, I've, I've got, like, so much respect for them. Um, we had a lot of tear-ups with them. There's a lot of things that have gone off. Um, me, me, one of my good friends, Steve Race, won't be uh, thanking me for this because they beat him up in London and nicked his trainers and then season after come to Bramall Lane and they, because our stand were near there, there away and he's, this he's has got his trainers on and they're all pointed at his feet like, you know what I mean? Because he nicked his trainers in this fight. And, it's good bit to... But yeah, it, 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 you, when you went to um, Cold Blow Lane, which is where Millwall's old ground in the 80s, you took your life in your hand, didn't it? I went five or six times and everyone, it were me, me. 83, Millwall stopped off in Sheffield and ended up fighting with some Sheffield United fans and a few people who were just out in town. And a Millwall fan died in fight. Died? Uh, yeah, he died. Right, so for, 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 no, what happened? He, he, he tried to drop, drop kick somebody and he, as he'd missed him, he fell back, smashed his head in payment and whatever happened but he died uh very right, unfortunate um so it weren't like he got beat up and killed and whatever it were he i don't know he was drunk or whatever but he tried to come full kick someday missed him and as he fell on the floor as his body fell out he just smashed his head on the pavement and he and he died but millwall all put it around there oh we've we chef united to kill one of our lads you know what i mean and so and it weren't like that and they eventually all truth came out and what have you but for four or five years, it were Millwall, Sheffield and I were it were a bit manic. What would happen when you when England plays? Did did you did the firms team up? England would take that many lads there, they they take a lot of northern firms went a lot of old smaller clubs used to take a big firm with England, like they'd take like people like Carlisle and Stockport and all that, but they'd take fifty lads and what have you. And during um World Cup in Night City. We're in, we're in France, in Lille. Oh, Derby started fighting with Forest because there were nobody to fight with. A massive three or 4,000 English in this square, all pissed up. Because there were nobody to fight with. Uh, Derby don't like Forest, so they started fighting with them. And Chelsea run out of fight with Leeds and blah, blah. I says, oh, fuck this. You're representing England to me. You've, and they were letting cl- uh, club rivalries take over main thing which you're a sport England and I just thought I oh, fucking can't be doing with this what happened in Poland 2000 euros I'll be honest with you two Sheffield United lads nearly nearly got killed one got stabbed uh, one got a machete a, a, a axe or a machete over the head he's got a scar on his head that lot that long um, it were all arranged by a middleman from Holland a well known middleman who used to fix all Oligan firms up to fight with each other. So he fixed this 
fight up in, I think he called it Monument Monument Park. Polish come and basically just smashed England all of it. Some Sheffield United lads stood, um, and they just got obviously beat up, stabbed, and uh, like I say, one and got machete over head. And they were lucky, lucky to live really. So I think it's just going a bit fucking too far that you know. Mm. Wednesday in Sheffield used to be best firm in the 70s before I was involved, I was too young. When 80s came along, sort of till 80, 83, Wednesday was still, they had a lot of big lads and big hitters and our old lads couldn't deal with them. But when our young casuals came along, myself and a few others, and we, we just came and showed them no respect. They were trying to knock me down a peg or two and trying to, they were trying to deal with me as a message to everybody else, thought if they get fucking batter me and get me that people so I was targeted a bit like I said it came to me work uh, I got a phone call to my house or threatening stuff and anyway one day I went football I fucking freezing cold they were only there were only fours on pitch because it was that cold they'd all stay in changing rooms and I were on pitch watch trying to warm up and my dad were there because my dad used to run run team like he used to be manager I fucking wanted him and one of my mates says fucking oh, Wednesday are here so I looked and he's like Five, six lads walking up, uh, with all with scars around the face. And I know straight away, and they were one of them, who, uh, one of main, Wednesday's main lads, who didn't have no covering on his face. I know he come for me, so I just went, and I was fucking on, got my football kit on and my boots and everything. So I was running, I went, come on then. And uh, he just went like that, pulled fucking his cleaver out of his coat. And next minute, I looked, one's got a bat, one's got a bottle, and all that now. And I'm like that, and I'm trying to, I'm, Trying to fight with him, got hit with it back. Fucking me, cup two or three teammates there just froze a bit, but they weren't football hooligans, you know what I mean? They were they just football lads like that. I didn't, I didn't think no worse of them not coming to train out there. But I wouldn't, I would I would, I would get, I won't run. And then I thought he fucking got hit two or three times with his back. And I looked behind me, they were a cricket pitch fenced off at the uh, for winter with these like big 3v3 rustic posts in ground. So I just fucking run off. Fuck you, pull this big rustic post out. I went, we're all told up now. And I run and just as I run at them and they all started thinking, but one threw this big bottle at me, it hit me on knee, smashed on my knee, ripped all my thigh up. And, um, I don't ever seen a muscle when it cuts. It just fluffs up like cotton, oh, cotton wool. Yeah. I got this big ball of cotton wool on my leg like that. And I fucking, like, running after them, chased them all the way up with this big fucking thing. And uh, my leg just went numb, and I couldn't, I couldn't keep up. I was fucking running and running. And then my leg went numb, and I just like collapsed on the floor. And they'd run off. And I had to go and have stitches in hospital and all that. Lot. I actually pulled them all, though, uh, even though they got scars around the faces and what have you. I got to know every one of them who were there, and I pulled them all one by one. Um, oh, shit. I, I, cracked, I cracked two of them. I punched two of them. But I said, like, and they were all saying, he said, he said, he said it was going to be one-on-one. -on -one. I went, well, it would have been one-on-one -on -one if you aren't a fucking old... You could, but he pulled the cleaver out. And I could have had a fight one-on-one -on -one with him, but they all, then they all come up trying to fucking club me with bats. So I went, that ain't no one-on-one. -on -one. So bang out of order. And that's how serious Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday rivalry is. That that, that story epitomises how bad it were that it got to that stage where they were prepared to go that low just to try and... Uh, beat number number one in city if you know what I mean yeah because they knew we were taking over we've touched on it a couple of times about undercover cops because I, I find that quite interesting and you were saying how they stick out like sore thumbs can you remember any specific time where you kind of go on oh, that's old bill that's that's a police officer there I'll tell you a little story once we play, we were playing man City at Bramall Lane it were sort of 80, 80, 80, 80, 89. And Man City's firm were walking to what's well, petrol station about a Bramall Lane. We come round corner, big fight happened, and all this lot. And then all these police come from everywhere into everybody. And then we all got split up. And then I, I ended up going round corner with two of my mates because they, they were nicking everybody in it, cracking everybody, the horses were there. And these fucking, these four or five blokes come at us, come on then. And I was looking and thinking, He's not a football, that's it. He's just, just started with dressed him. And like, I'm going, fuck off. And he's going, come on, and one chat to boat, mate. 
And I was like, I didn't even attack or they fucking, oh, Bill, the, the police. And I went, go fuck, I could get, I could get your uniforms back on. And they just like stopped and just looked at me like gone out thinking, go get your fucking uniforms back on. So they were trying to square up. And I throw one punch, I'd have been neat. And they were, they were trying to boot me and all sorts of but They just stuck out like sore thumbs, just eat their hair, cut everything about them. They couldn't even square up properly, you know, you know, you know football lads. And it was just, I thought, fuck you know. That's how bad it's getting now that they're trying to cause you to throw a punch and then you get you've got the rest, don't they? You throw them back your knit. Steve Cowens, thank you very much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for that. And but before I go, love and peace to everybody. Thanks, Steve. And if you want to read more about football violence in the eighties and nineties, check out Blades Business Crew. It's basically a book full of fighting. Uh, and Steve's got some other books as well, Blades Business Crew 2, and uh, he's also uh, put both those books together and released out a latest copy, haven't you? Yeah, you can get my books on my website on my website as well. So it's uh, www.stevecowens.co.uk. Great, and thank you very much for listening. Some of our best guests have come from your ideas. So if you have any suggestions on who should, we should interview next, Feel free to slide into my DMs on Instagram or Twitter. And make sure you share this with your friends.